Switch. Are we recording? Switched and recording. Strangs. All right, guys. Um, besides, I was was this last weekend. If you didn't go, uh, you missed out. Um, good time. Videos will be up. And uh, one of the one of the awesome things about it is they have a great CTF. And they had, I believe, 55 teams sign up for the CTF. Um, so. As you can see here, um, our team came in second. Did pretty well. Pretty it was happy. Really about close that. there for a while. Yeah, yeah. Now we were, <laughs> we were, we were ahead for a while, and then. Yeah. <laughs> no, I meant like the uh, twenty-one thirty there, and we were so close. We were excited oh, about that. Wow. Time. And then yeah. they found another. Yeah, team. and then they were just like, Whoop. <laughs> well, they yeah they absorbed two other teams and. Ouch! They were like the so. monster. But, uh, but yeah, so um, <laughs> we decided we'd go over some of the solutions. So some of you guys uh, wondered how how certain things are solved. Um, I'm gonna go first, um, and actually I'm gonna start with a physical one. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> uh, so one of the physical ones that we got was it was a box. It had a deadbolt. And you're supposed to unlock it, and there's supposed to be a flag in there, right? Um, as you can see here, I forgot how to use my computer. Um, this is what I used instead. That's a, a, a tablet, that's a, a Nexus 7, and that's an endoscope right there. So that has a little camera on the end and allows me to see inside of things. This is our <laughs> little uh, shimming paper, and you can probably kind of see that there's a gap there. Um, I'm not saying whoever constructed this did a poor job, but. It well, may have been constructed last year on the back of a pickup truck. We'll just leave it at that, but um, here's a video I got, so you guys can, if I can figure out how to play this. Space 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 there we go. So, there's the flag, Teenage Mutant Deadlock. <laughs> so that's what, that's what that looks like. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> we tried scoping the ATM and that was not working. We, it was we figured the flag was in the money dispenser and that's uh, you know you couldn't you couldn't get a full scope in there or an endoscope in there. They uh, they kind of designed those things for those. Okay, so um, I primarily did the forensics challenges, so I'm just going to start with these. Uh, most of these were a PCAP. One was a memory image. So the first one was, who's is faster? Um, let's see if I can blow this up a little. I forgot how to use buttons and stuff. Oh, it's because I'm... Demos are hard, huh? Yeah. It's because I'm trying to, use, <laughs> trying to use Mac commands on a freaking uh, Linux VM. So who's is faster? Um, basically, public DNS server uh, that has recently been judged as the fastest on Earth. So I've got my the PCAP open. You can see it's not small. Um, but first thing, public DNS, well, they told us it's DNS. So, um, and because I pay attention to the news, I know that we've got some DNS servers here. 8.8.8.8, .8 .8 .8. that's Google. 1.1.1.1, that's Cloudflare. That's the one that they just announced. Um, I don't know if you guys saw it, but. Um, saying they, they took, uh, that was previously a research IP, so it's actually kind of funny seeing all the issues that they're having with it. Uh, a lot of networks were using that internally, a lot of networks were blocking that. So um, there have been some, some issues with that rollout, but um, that was the answer. The flag was Cloudflare, so um, you kind of have to, it helps knowing those, but. Um, did, did it have any indicators in the PCAP itself? Like with Oh, no, no, it's just because I knew that I was reading that the Cloudflare had been judged as the fastest public oh, units provider. I got you. Yeah. So you so. And you can. Oh, well, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> you can put in wrong responses. Had, had you not known what would be a way to verify that that is the one that you were looking for? You can have it. Yeah. Well, so, but if you who is, so. It's, they I did guess update it. it. They did they? They did update it. It wasn't updated this weekend because I was trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I swear they did. Somebody wanted them. It's on your password, man. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a demo on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to let me It's, it's <laughs> password zero one. <laughs> I see. Yeah, it's, it's still AP Nick research. Uh, go up. I thought they did it. It's somewhere else in that. I don't know. Whatever. AP Nick Labs. Yeah, cloud and, and, and Cloudflare yeah. DNS resolver. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But if you go to, I think if you go to, it tells you. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course it's their website, so they're going to tell you all about how great it is. <laughs> right there. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was big. It was big over the last month. They unveiled it on April Fools. They yeah. unveiled it on uh, April first. Four one. Yep. Yeah. So that's going to go. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so this one was a little bit, um, it wasn't as intuitive. Uh, so this one is asking us, uh, what is the IP address of the wireless access point? And so um, I kind of I kind of went with, um, you know, how would you identify a wireless access point? And um, did they, I thought, sorry to interrupt, did they work off all off the same PCAP? Yeah, yep. So um, I kind of thought, um, well, there's some there's some um, ICMP stuff that you see, so um, I'm gonna look at the notes. What was it? I don't remember. Um, but uh, V6, you should see if it's if it's V6 enabled, you'll see um, router advertisements, and um, you do see them. However, when you take that when you take that MAC address, it doesn't correspond for some reason. Um, so what I ended up, the way I ended up finding it was, uh, <coughs> so there's those router, router solicitation, um, or red, no, they didn't have router advertisements, that's what it was. Um, so I ended up going with ICMP, and here we've got destination unreachable, um, and if, if you know about ICMP, that's, a, that's an error message, or that's an ICMP message that you get from a router. Um, the question, of course, was the access point, but in this case, I was like, well, maybe the access point is the router. Um, so this ended up being the access point. So the source that sent this was the access point. That's how I found it. Emotional, next one. Okay, uh, PCAP, again, uh, what domain's A record was resolved that might have something to do with the encoded flag you're about to get sooner or later? Um, so again, this one, um, a record, SDNS. So this one's kind of redundant, but start looking through here, and you'll see uh, there's an a record and codeemoji.org. That sounds emotional. So um, you could also try just brute forcing it, throwing all the a, a records in there. So that's the answer. Codeemoji.org. I'm going to skip the memo and come back to it, but this was where it starts to get really cool. So uh, you found a PCAP file. Again, they're all kind of building on each other. Um, a standard port, but a non-standard protocol should get you started. So something set in an encoded format, and they're asking you what the name of the original file was. So standard port, non-standard protocol. So the way I solved that is I came over here, I went to my statistics menu in, Wire, uh, in Wireshark, and I went to statistics, yeah. Protocol hierarchy. No, that's not it. <laughs> Demo gods. Conversations, that's it. Statistics conversations. Okay. So try to make this bigger for you guys. You going to respect? No. Okay, that's not working. Um, so, start with IPv4, and we're really looking for. Um, now, why does this look different? You have to add the column. Yeah. Okay. I guess I had it. So I switched. I had this over in. Um, I did it all on my Mac, and for the demo, I'm doing it on here. But you have to add the columns. You'll see the you'll see the ports. Um, basically, you're seeing a lot of web traffic here. Take my word for it. Oh wait, 
Here we go. TCP. Ports. So a lot of web traffic. Um, nothing really jumps out. UDP. Well, I don't know. Port 22 UDP. That's a little odd. So I want to see what that is. And I want to uh, follow stream down here. Is that the right one? There it is. All right, follow stream. Why is that not working? UDP stream equals. Right, one more try at a time, and I'll get it. Okay, that's the one. Yeah. Port equals twenty-two. So this is what should have come up. Um, we look at that, and um, sorry, let's see. There we go. So, um, and again, I can't amp. I can't magnify this. I don't know the commands, but the answer is right here at the top. It's this what am I dot png. So. And then the last flag, it's really interesting. Caesar Moji. So you found your PCAF file. Um, you found the encoded format, and by now you have extract oh, I was supposed to extract the file in the last one. Is that right? No, yeah. that was just a to extract the PCAP and the last one. Oh, it's the name of the other one. Yeah. This is your goal is to extract the file. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Relate to the map and you can't do it without yeah. it. So this one, it, it's telling me, so what I need to do is extract the file. So here's what I do. I go over here. I've got this conversation. It's UDP, so that's the file being sent. Um, I want the bulk of the file. I want, I want the one side. I want the person sending it. So there. I've got the person sending it, 9680, and I've got the raw. So that's that should be the file. So I do save as, and you can see I've already done this. Dump, I'm just going to name one of my dump two. So. Save. Um, and the next part of that is asking, I think it's asking what the file is. Or it's asking how to get it out. So basically, we had to figure out what the hell this thing was. Um, started with, uh, went down a lot, a lot of wrong paths, looked for different image file uh, headers, couldn't find them. Um, tried, tried turning it, you know, tried changing the extension to PNG, didn't work. What we ended up doing was, um, instead of going that route of trying to find a header, I looked at the header and figured out what the hell it was. So I'll go here. Google it. You start Googling 1F88B, and everything that comes up says GZIP. So that's a GZIP. The other way you could do it is if you're on the command line. Um, and I think I put that in my home directory. So the what am I? You do a file on that. And it'll tell you. What am I dump? GZIP and uh, compressed data. So you change the extension on that. And then you can unzip it. So, um, my dump. It's probably going to tell me I can't do this because I already did it. And so I've got one of mine in there. And I wrote down the command, so I looked super cool doing this, even though I'm not looking at my notes. <laughs> XDG open what am I? Wow, and that's it. And again, I don't know how to make this. There we go. Except that looks awful. So this emoji. What the hell is it? And now I made it too big. There we go. So that's what it is. It's an image file containing that. And that's a flag. So like, how the hell do we figure that out? Um, 
I'll, I'll save you the, uh, the long boring part of it. Um, I will tell you straight up that if you put the answer into that code emoji website and go through every freaking option to encode it, you don't get that. So it, it, isn't, it wasn't made with code emoji. And that was one of the hints we got was don't use that website. But the um, way we ended up solving it was um, we might have overheard someone uh, saying that the letter that's repeated three times and I lost that thing. So uh, it's a Caesar cipher. And the letter that's repeated three times is an S. And that's that little snorty face guy. So um, kind of kind of dawned on a, did it just dawn on you? or I walked up and you guys were like, I can't figure this thing out. Yeah. And, you and you're like, wait, wait, wait. B sides, yeah. and then and then we we figured it out from the other one. That's an S at the end. Um, there B sides Iowa. That's an O. B sides B, B sides Iowa rocks, and that was the flag. So and Zach yelled it with all the other people. Yeah, and then Zach's like, B sides <laughs> Iowa rocks. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty good. The excitement is real, man. Um, but but we were talking to to Tom, I think afterwards, and and he was asking us how we solved it, and we told him that, and he's like he's like, yeah, I think. Nobody actually solved it. Everybody that got it guessed yes, it. Yeah. They got the image. So I think what he said, I don't I don't know if he was saying this from from because he knew the answer. I think he was just guessing it. Is that you were supposed to go down the emoji, figure out the first letter of the description of each one, and then that was your Caesar cipher, and then you try the different uh, rots on it, and you're supposed to get the answer that way. I didn't try solving it that way yet. Um, the problem with emoji is there's, um, it doesn't seem like the name is fully standardized. Uh, the site I found had had um, names in one column and then it had alternate names in another. So I don't, I don't know for a fact if the if there is a standard name for each emoji. Um, so maybe someone else knows that. But. Um, last flag I will cover is the mem dump. Um, so it was just find the flag. Uh, you you unzip it and you try opening it in volatility and it can't find the profile. Uh, you try opening it in recall, it can't find the profile. Um, what it is, it, it's a Linux memory image. And I've run into this in previous CTFs where if you know what the distro is and what the kernel is, and you can usually find that through strings, what you need to do is then um, make, set up a VM using that make your own profile and then you can open it you can open the image using that profile that you've made there's there's resources out there doing it i've done it before it's a huge pain in the ass um or you can just run strings so <coughs> that how you found it it works sometimes yeah yeah so. and that's the thing like really <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't have... <laughs> yeah. so i did that's i did strings mem dot dump <laughs> and then i grepped for well, it's a flag. We know we know the flag format, right? So it's flag and then <laughs> open curly brace. Except you know you got to escape your open curly brace there. And I'll pipe this into less, so it's easier to read. But there it is. That's our flag. I like I like how they made it like really painfully <laughs> obvious. Like like okay, doing an operation on the flag. Okay, here's the flag again. So, fly, 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 yeah. fly, fly, fly. so that's it. That's the flag. All righty. That's it for, um, I did a few other ones, but that, those are the ones I was going to run through. So who's next? I only did a couple. Do so I spent most of my time in the CTF getting people signed up and getting new people. Oh, kind we're going to use my yeah. machine? Okay. Started in. Did you left on that? Yeah, it magically appeared in the CTF room afterwards. Really? Go cool figure. Um, you are really need, tempting to demo guys. I don't need any of that fancy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'll just download a bunch of stuff here. Cool. Um, a couple of the ones that I did. Um, what was that? AV meter? Is that a good Yeah, there we go. Um, so I did exotic exfil. Uh, and I literally just started with three because it was a high point value and we were running behind. So I, I kind of just jumped in. Um, 
And being exotic, I figured, let's watch the video, see if there's any like artifacts or anything that kind of stood out. Boop. Not my hands, though. Oh! Well, I can't do passwords. We know that. <laughs> So anyway, exotic ice spell, right? So we know that it's an MP4, MP4 or MP3. Either or, it's a video of some sort. So you know, we know that they're trying to get data out of, you know, whatever they're trying to get data out of, and they're using this video format. So you know, Stego maybe somewhere in there. Uh, maybe they just padded it. MP4s, MP3s are huge. You can get a lot of uh, BS data in there um, before you really start, you know, causing trouble. But I figured let's watch it. Uh, one of the other MP3s was like slowed down a bunch, and then you had to extend it. No, other way. It was super fast, and you had to slow it down. It was it was super slow, and it was Dutch. Yeah. So I figured you know maybe there's something pretty obvious in it. This is gonna be it's awesome because it's not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that is an Ubuntu yeah. installation yeah. with the SIP packages, and that's it. <laughs> so it's not in base Ubuntu. I don't have it. Is your forensic package? No. <laughs> that, that pretty much is my forensic package. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't even know what screen this is at this point. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> Let's just try opening it. Maybe the internet knows. Doesn't it have. Uh, no, it doesn't have USB as well, does it? No, it's for you. So MP4 format. We can confirm that. Can confirm. How many are you going to do? I, I can plug in. I've got it plugged in. Uh, I was just going to do the exit of uh, XFIL and then one of the. Can we plug in into it? It's not going to play now. Let's see. If I can get to a terminal, I can get. Oh, it's Ubuntu. It's not single user. Uh... <laughs> What's your, what's your password? <laughs> <laughs> you might as well just type it in. I'll take me an hour to do it. So yeah, uh, OK, so where were we? MP3s, right? So there's a lot of data to the back end of that. You can pad a lot of stuff. You can uh, insert other files into the middle without creating too many artifacts. Hopefully, these will go pretty quick. The internet here is pretty good. Let's just be blazing. Blazing fast. We can do the other one while we wait. So let's put a pin in MP3s, because MP3s are fun. All about that bass. So this was a crypto. And this is a huge string of stuff with a couple of equal marks at the end. If you take a look at it, and this is this is the kind of crap that you learn at CTX, right? I can see that, and I'm like, mm, that's base sixty four. So I know that at least to start there. Do you, you probably don't have CyberShell on here, do you? It's a website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a jar file, sir. So CyberChef is an awesome, awesome cyber or cybersecurity tool. <laughs> CTF tool. Sends everything to the British spies. Yeah, <laughs> like 100% of it. I don't know how to copy on a Mac. What are you doing? I have no idea, dude. <laughs> I'm just shooting from the hip with all this shit. <laughs> what kind of movie maker? What the <laughs> Why is this? Why are you making this shit? Stay in the VM. <laughs> <laughs> nice. right. So apparently I'm a cybersecurity expert, right? <laughs> Can't even computer. All right, so let's right-click copy that. You, can you not right-click on a Mac? And you have to do two fingers? What is this bullshit? It's like the future here. All right, so I know. <laughs> Why did that you, not think? You just copied it. You, you yeah. copy. Well, come That's on, cool. man. Do the thing I want you to do, not what I tell you to do. <laughs> Uh, let's not go too base 64, but CyberChef, it has like all this stuff on the sidebar here that you can jump into. It has like some built in Stego stuff, I wouldn't trust it too much, but it'll do like a data format so you can throw a file on there and kind of figure out what a file is and you know, stuff like that. Um, so here we go. So, top side on the, on, on the right here is your base 64 that we entered in, and it shot out something on the bottom. So, looking at it, there's no padding. Um, base 32 will have uh, three equal signs for the padding, but I can see that it's all uppercase and it's all numbers, which again, more CTF crap knowledge that you learn doing CTFs, 
all uppercase and all letters, or all uppercase letters and numbers is typically base sixty or base thirty two. Also, so, so. right? <laughs> yeah. So now I can come over and go back from base sixty two, and just kind of add that into the cyber shop on the left on that middle column there. So now it's taken my base sixty four down to thirty two and down into the output thirty two, which is something. But there's curly brackets, nice four letters. Oh, so there's there's a flag there. VBQW. So that looks like a rot, because Tom said immediately off the top of his head. That looks like a rot thirteen to me. No, he said ten. Ten. <laughs> but so throw your rot in there, and then if this is all live action with the with the Java. So I can just increment through it until it makes sense. Oh shit! Fly. Hey. Oh, cool. All about that base. So you can throw it all in there in one in one kind of go, and that was the flag. And that's the flag. And that's the flag. So there's that one. Let's see if our videos. I can't alt tab. God forbid. <laughs> all right. VLC says it's done. You can do everything you can do in Visual. <laughs> Except for open files, apparently. It looked like it was playing in the background. Was it? Behind that window, yeah. I don't even know how to minimize this. So what the frick Yeah, there. Oh, oh, it is playing. Yep. Bam! Well, All right, so Matt. So, Exco, <laughs> we don't have audio, but so that's Nate Super from TechDSM, and he's chatting there, right? And I'm looking at this, and I'm like, oh, cool. So they had somebody come back in and do some sign language. I took sign language, you know, a few years ago, fucking 15 years ago or something. <laughs> so, right, a few years ago. So I'm watching her, and I'm listening to Nate, and she's signing stuff, and I'm like, wait, what? So I connect. Listening, he's talking about networks, he's talking about interconnecting. So I'm kind of like watching the two videos. I'm looking in here for flags and stuff in, in the actual words. Uh, you know, she's talking, she's spelling out the protocol. She's saying my network, that network, trying to interconnect the two. So I take one network, I connect it to mine. I take one network, I connect it to this one, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then she says focus. Flag equals Y king purple. What? And then she goes back to talking about what Nate's talking about. It's kind of it's kind of easy to see when you're not listening to audio, but it kind of threw me for a loop, right? Because she was kind of following along, and then all of a sudden, right about 45 seconds here, she kind of stops what she's doing. Focus flag equals or the same as, and then she signs the flag. Why king purple? So that was the flag. She tossed it right into the speech as he was going. So I literally just took that. God, don't want to press Alt Tab. <laughs> alt F4 will probably break something. We'll just drag and drop it out of my because this operating system is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's the mouse, man. This mouse is, <laughs> this mouse is ruining me. So I threw that into Exotic Expo 3, and it totally worked. And I was excited about that. So I was like, oh, I'll take a look at two. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that was it. Yeah. So, but here's the thing, right? Watch that and was like, nope. Yeah, you, you would have had <laughs> no idea. But here's the thing, though, with exotic, because I did it backwards, flag is the same as uh my chick or uh, not chick female cousin <laughs> my wife gets mad when i say chick i'm from southern california it's ingrained in me female cousin something library gold library but if i'd have gone to two i'd have seen it like immediately and i wouldn't have had to spend so much time digging around three but yeah so that's where exotic expo one and two were is they were just basic sign not basic it was sign language on the videos themselves um if you go back to one, somebody had already solved one on our team by the time I got, got to play. Um, but one was literally just like four, three or four words signed. I didn't even take a look at it. Um, and you could have gone to like uh, Life Prints a great website. There's you know a bunch of different translation websites for, for ASL. You could have gone and, and kind of matched it up one to one, you know, Wikipedia style really. But as it progressed, it definitely got harder. Well, so those are a couple that I grabbed. I can confirm about the exact extra one. I saw that I just did one to one matching letters. Awesome, man. Thanks. I will. Yeah. 
You were in better shape than I was. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's that. Yeah. I'm gonna try to use your laptop. Oh, good luck, man. Yeah. Good luck. I'll bring mine up in case. Oh. Those yeah. Apple mice. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to go through a couple also. Um, I was telling John for um, for a lot of these, what I did, um, I actually went through most of the reversing ones just because um, everybody else was working on the easy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I kid, I kid. Um, but seriously. Um, oh, actually, no, I, I take it back. I started uh, started on the recon ones, right, because recon is easy stuff. You guys know what I do. I do vulnerability management, so scanning. Come on. Right? Um, I actually didn't do the first one, somebody had done the first one. So I went to the second one, hidden flag. Ah, yeah. So this one was a little weird. Um, I beat on this for a little while. Do you have burp on here? Uh, no, probably not. Fuck it. Um, so you click on this link, um, the only thing it gives you is a hint that says uh, find a flag in this leaky bucket, right? Um, so looking at this, pretty basic website. Um, uh, Matt actually admitted this. He goes, well, here's the extent of my uh, website, pen testing. <laughs> Um, and he did a view source. Yeah. Not there. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> right. Did you try um, to find a flag? <laughs> and admit it, that's the first thing all of us did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but I didn't have to quit there. I knew how to use Burp too. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I used Burp and I looked at the headers and screwed with some of the headers. And this looks like all standard stuff to me. Nothing, nothing exciting. Right? Mm -hmm. um, Honestly, I gave up and walked away. And then later I heard somebody say, oh, yeah, for that one, you know, somebody gave a talk at SecDSM. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, shit, I Google. Okay. <laughs> so uh, um, literally just went Sec, DSM, and Bucket. Pretty sure. Oh, Bucket, Site, Sec, DSM, or maybe. Watch it. Nikolai around me. No, it wasn't Sec, DSM. Was it was? Uh -huh. It was. Oh. Uh, actually, let me do it this way. This is how I found it, anyways. No. Why is it not working? <laughs> no, someone, did, someone did a write up. And yeah, it was a gal. It was a gal from yeah, Sexy or something. Yeah, it's the it's her. Uh, tried. Why would that not work? That's exactly what I googled for. So. They scrubbed the internet for that either. They did. <laughs> Um, all right. Someone made a great Amazon. Oh, so it wasn't on site. Yeah, that's how, yeah. That's Dev.to. Blog? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what if I wrote a person that is. There we go. There it is. There it is. Yeah, because it wasn't actually on the site. So I did search for it the dumb way first, not site. Um, so here you go. Here's a write up from someone, SecDSM. Uh, talking about uh, Amazon buckets. Anybody familiar with the Amazon buckets term? I was not. Yeah, the pen tester. Yeah. Um, so read through this right the same way I read through any set of technical directions. Blah 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 <laughs> blah blah blah. blah, blah. <laughs> and then there was pictures. a uh, pictures. exactly pictures pictures. And then there was a reference to this um, um, this other site, this Rhino Security Labs uh, walkthrough for um, pen testing uh, Amazon buckets. Um, most of the write-up, both the, the SecDSM write-up and the Rhino bucket, um, focuses on using the Amazon AWS API tools um, to do this type of recon. Um, so again, we, we kind of scrolled through this and we're like, oh, words, 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 oh crap, we have to use the API, it must be something magical with the API. So Dennis and I were, you know, installing the API and looking at the how-to and then I, I just kind of kept scrolling. I said, oh, well, you can use a browser too, you don't have to use the API, that sounds more my speed kidding but um, so let me go back and really all they did was um, here it is view source garbage go back all they really did was remove the website part pretty straightforward right a little URL hacking Axor. oh look there's um, config stuff config stuff there's an index.htm key and there's a give fact uh, key as well um, index looks uninteresting this one looks more interesting copy paste that guy um, per the guidance in the article, whoops, not into its own URL, but at the end of this one, and bam, flag. Hey, there it is. Oh. So um, I wasn't familiar with the Amazon bucket thing, um, so the, the hint was necessary for me, but after that, it was pretty quick. What made you think that delete the website portion of the URL? 
vertical says too. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. somebody else thought about it. Well, it's, 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 <laughs> it's like the ice solved is using the, the AWS. Uh, yeah. The, the, the whole article, like the, the whole Sec DSM article focused on the API. And then I was like, words, 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 words. Clicked on the, the Rhino Security Labs one, same deal. It starts talking about the API. My buddy Dennis immediately goes to work installing the API. Never used the, the API tool before. And I'm just scrolling down, and I'm like, or no, actually, we got as far as trying to use the API to require a password. I was like, what's, where the hell are we supposed to get a password from? We have to have our own password. Like, why is it requesting or asking us for a password? We did the, um, and I think it was because we were trying to access, um, why was it? Maybe because we were trying to access the, the wrong URL or something. It was prompting us for a password, and we didn't have one configured. And so I just kept scrolling, um, and then, we started talking about you don't have to actually have the tools. And I just looked at the URL at the top of the, um, the, the image here. I'm like, oh, all that is is basically the, the bucket minus the website verbiage. So I just axed that and hit it, and there you go. So, pretty neat. Uh, the, next <laughs> one's, um, the next one's a little harder, I promise. Um, this one will be fun to do live. So this one actually was. Um, reversing. My favorite type of reversing is Java reversing. Sometime ask me about my, my three day Java reversing. So, you um, should have thought about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I probably still have the files though. I chased a piece of malware that was obfuscated. It was five files of obfuscated Java I chased for three days. Were you there for that? Mm -hmm. I was like writing on. Windows and shit. <laughs> because obfuscators take readable variables and make them crap, right? It sucked. But I got down to the end and found nothing. So that was the key. Um, all right, so did I just download that guy or what? Yes, I did. What do you got on here? X term? Oh, Whatever removes the console. Okay. <laughs> Whatever is stock. Yeah. yeah. So how can I make this so everybody can see it? Any ideas? Control shift plus. Yeah. Okay. That's a big fat no. It's what it is on a not Mac. Just keep doing <laughs> finger gymnastics until you get it. Control plus. I think if you hit alt, it'll we'll get a function control shift plus. No. If you, if you right click on it, does it give you a side down? If you go all the way to the, up no. to the top, it should give you the menu. I did that too. It's hosed, man. Yeah. This X, this X term, hippie nonsense. How about you, X term? How about terminal? Yeah, terminal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Hey, <laughs> scroll through. The control shift plus works there. <laughs> yeah, I saw control. What was it? Control plus plus or some nonsense. I'm sorry, guys. You're right. This this laptop sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Apple Josh, you know. It's gonna know how to use the tool. Okay, add some Java here. Uh, it's a Java class file. You guys know about Java class files. It means it's compiled. Son of a gun. Um, so I just did. So in the past, right? If you're familiar with Java, you'd use JAD, right? Java decompiler or JDI or JDI GUI, whatever the hell the other one was. Um, nowadays, as long as you don't care about the contents, you can just go to to the Googles and say web-based Java decompiler. Oh, look, there's one I can click on. Probably won't give Matt malware. That's the yeah. I can go to the Russians. I don't care if they get the flag. <laughs> um, so upload that guy, upload and decompile. Pretty straightforward. Pretty fast. Aha! There it is, de decompiled. Doesn't really do a lot, right? But there is something in there that everybody sees. What do you see? String. I string? see base 64 string. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be doing anything in the Java class. My first thought was, well, I'm going to have to, you know, code something fancy to make this work. But then when I looked at the class, I'm like, oh, well, no, I just need to take something out of it. So pull that guy out. Um, yeah, I don't need anything. Oh, I do need something else in there, actually. So I'm going to leave it up. But um, pull that guy out. Actually, the first, I'm sorry, man. I did the same thing. Where's the, uh, how do I go back? Four fingers swipe or three fingers? No, it's four. <laughs> it's, four. Usually it's three on mine. Why is it four on yours? Oh, 
Mine's one better than yours. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> yours is set up for woodworkers. <laughs> Okay, so I've got a string here, um, and you do have base 64, that's good. So I don't have to try to download anything. Um, so I'm going to go and dump this thing in a file. Um, uh, you know, this is going to be the hard part, is I'm going to have to write the loop live. So I did some big hammer um, loop writing here. Learn from Zach's mistakes. Okay. All right, so there's my string, base pipe, base 64, um, decode, right? All right, that looks like some cipher to me, right? So this is an encrypted something. Um, most folks will run, and I, I did too, will run to um, uh, OpenSSL for this, and hopefully you have that. Nailed it. Yeah. SSL. Um, Actually, the first thing I did was man open SSL, but um, it's been a while since I used it. But dash D, I remember, was um, decrypt. Um, it's going to give you cipher commands. So here are all the types of ciphers that I could use to guess at um, using um, to decrypt that. So I don't like guessing. I also don't like spending my time enumerating crap. So I decided to big hammer this thing and just throw all this crap into a loop. Copy, so then ciphers, because I don't have PP paste. Ah, uh, stop it. Paste, learn from mistakes. Um, one got cut, cut off, how about that? AES, pretty sure. So I just threw this in there, cat ciphers. Um, I actually shortcutted this on mine, so I'm going to drag you guys through it. I think the real challenge, though, is getting out of them. <laughs> Four finger death punch. Um, what was he doing? Print one. Yeah. Off. Anybody? Right. So there's my first column for that guy, and something I'm just gonna name CI because that's how my brain works. Two. Three. Four. Why do I do it this way? Because I like to parse in my loops things in uh, one item per line in my files. Um, call it a nuance personality flaw. Um, I had a space in here for an empty line, a couple empty lines between my columns. Because the way I copy pasted it. There we go. Now it's nice and clean. So now I can do cool things like um, just loop each one of those through and do a decrypt on um, using each of the ciphers um, so that I don't have to bang that out manually and make a mistake 500 times. Um, I also knew by a little bit of trial and error relearning OpenSSL that I'm going to need a password. You can guess what the password is? Besides Iowa. Probably from all over. That is a good guess. If only there was something like hmm. clocks, Eastside Iowa clocks. He's not going to yell it. Besides Iowa rocks! Besides Iowa rocks! All right. So it's Hello World, right? The only other string I have to work with here, guys, the only other clue I have is Hello World, right? So I guessed that that was my password, so. I'm just going to throw it in a file because I like doing that instead. Hello, comma, space, capital, world. What is the format? Uh, for, nope. Wow, read line. Do echo line to make sure I'm not doing stu something stupid. Done the CI. There you go. So it's going to loop through all my ciphers. So this is my big hammer. So now i got to remember the open SSL. Um, the first thing I do, actually, echo line is good, so I know which one I tried um, in my output. So I'm going to spit the line out first, and then because um, that's going to spit out the cipher that I tried, and so I'm going to be able to see in case I used a cipher somewhere in the middle, which turned out not to be the case this time, but I'll know exactly which cipher it was. Um, spit out the line, and then um, thinking, open SSL. Um, I think you give it the cipher next line um, dash d oh, shit dash dash in dash in I'm gonna get this wrong a couple times so let me just cheat so that I don't have to waste you guys this time so 
No, I was right about the line part. Um, okay, A, D. Uh, the A was, I think the A does the, um, no. What does the A do? Does anybody remember? I'll man it here in a minute. In, the, in a minute, if none, none of you know what it is. A64. Um, the pass, I put a file. You can actually specify the password, um, like pass equals or something. There's like three different ways to specify this. I used file because there's a space in it, and it didn't like me using quotes. Um, maybe I just had to escape the space or something, but I just, to hell with it, I saw there was a file option, so I did that. Oh, and then there was one more, one more gotcha here in a second. But um, pass, file, what did I put the, what was the name of the file? Anybody? Pass? Something like that? Maybe the pass WD. WD? Mm -hmm. okay. It's on the brain. It works. Um, that was it. Brian, oh, I didn't do the end. Oh, that's fine. You did it the other way around. So you can actually give it a flag. You can do uh, an in flag to read the, um, uh, the ciphertext uh, from another file, if you would like. Um, I actually did it this way. Um, I actually just cat the file and piped in. Base, but that works. So um, this was my first shot. I got a whole bunch of. Um, go back to that. Bad decrypt, bad decrypt. This wasn't the error I was looking for. No, well, there you go. Actually, it did work that way. Oh, okay, so I know what I did wrong. So, um, so if you scroll all the way up, you can actually find, um, just scrolling through, it'll, it'll give you, you can see all the junk characters for the cipher that it tried. Um, kind of errored out, said this decryption didn't really work. Here's some junk. Um, all the way through all the ciphers, and then you get to the very first one, and you see the value. I actually, I actually didn't do it this, do it this way the first time. Um, I can't remember what I screwed up, but I ended up uh, using the, uh, uh, piping the cipher in from file using the, um, I think it's like in dash in flag to, to pull in the cipher from the file. Something that I learned, which maybe you guys um, would learn from too, was you get a really generic error. It can't read from file. OpenSSL can't read from file. What the hell? I, I ended up Googling it. it. It wasn't it wasn't the easiest thing to Google. I had to look through a couple of posts to find it. Um, OpenSSL can only read 64 characters per line from a file. So you have to put a return character after the 64th character in the line. So the base 64 string was more than 64 characters. But you go to the 64th, put that on the, the rest of it on a new line, and then you can read it in. Wow. It was screwed up. Yeah. Wow. That was, I don't know why, but it is what it is. So apparently if you just um, cat the file, you don't have to worry about that garbage, but I missed that. So um, everybody know what that is from earlier? Base 32. Base 32, yeah. because it's Tom Pohl. He loves Pretty Base 32. Um, so some, whoops, some Cyber Chef and bada bing, bada boom, you have a flag. And that's it. Very simple, right? Mm -hmm. Ooh. It's probably very open. Yeah. Go, go faster. Cyber with a line on Ryan. Stupid. Um, base 32, which was where? Yeah, it's a search. That's garbage. Base. Should be at the top. Like nobody else uses Tom Pole uses it all the time. Ta da. I just liked it because it got me a chance gave me a chance to use my, my bash loop code for these guys. <laughs> That's it. Um, the others actually I got most of the reversing ones. Um, I'm not very good at reversing yet. Um, got most of the other reversing ones just with strings. Um, either straight up strings or loading them into a um, a debugger and going through and finding the pieces of strings and commands and finding the flag format just like everybody else did. So that's it. Done. And that's how we almost won the CTF. And that's how we almost won the CTF. Yeah. Well, we got a badge to CypherCon, so we're going to CypherCon next year. Awesome. All right. That's it. Um, I guess I don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs>